I got another request for uh, some more examples of function notation and how to work with it. So what I've got here is an equation in two variables. If I wanted to rewrite that as a function notation, we're going to keep the name k. We're going to call that k of y equals 5y plus 7. The only thing that really changed was this front. Now remember, that is not k times y, it is k of y equals 5y plus 7. And remember, that is function notation. Let's do another example. So here I've got q of z equals 3z over 5. Now that one is function notation because it's written as q of z. If I want you to rewrite it as an equation in two variables, we would just simply rewrite it without that uh, bracketed z part, this part right here. So I would rewrite this as q equals 3z over 5. So rewriting it back and forth between the two forms isn't that complicated. They're not significantly different from each other. They're just a little bit different in how they're applied and used. As a third example, you're often going to see equations written as y equals 4x minus 3. That is an equation in two variables. If we're talking about x's and y's, mathematicians like to use the term f for that function f of x equals 4x minus 3. Any other case, like over here, I use the q and the q. In this case, if it's x's and y's, mathematicians like to go with f of x, f being our function. Let's answer a couple of questions here. So here I've got a function, f of x equals 5x plus 7. I'm going to use that for both of these questions coming up here. So the question asks, f of 3 equals what? So really what I'm doing is I'm calculating f of, and it's 3 equals. Now anywhere where there's an x instead of that x, I'm going to put in this 3. Now I had a 5 in my formula before. Instead of that x, I'm putting in a 3 plus 7. So everything that was in black there, that was my original equation. I just swapped out any of the x's for 3's. So if I finish this off, 5 times 3 is 15 plus 7. Oh, there should be a 3 in there. f of 3 equals 22. Let's do another one over here. Same thing, f of 2. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. Instead of the 2, or sorry, instead of the x, I'm going to put a minus 2 equals 5. And once again, instead of that x, I'm going to put my minus 2 in there. Watch those signs. Plus 7. So f of minus 2 equals 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10 plus 7, f of negative 2 equals negative 3. So, my function of negative 2 equals negative 3. Let's continue using that same function. Let's just do a little more work backwards with it. So here we have f of x equals 5x plus 7. But now, I know that f of x equals 32. So now I know my outs the answer that it outputs, but I want to know what x did I have to put into that equation to get 32. So what I'm going to do now, instead of writing the f of x in, I'm going to put that answer in. So 32, and then I'm going to put the rest of the function in, 5x plus 7. Now I just do some algebra to solve for x. 
We'll subtract 7 from both sides. 32 minus 7 is going to give me 25. Equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. x equals 5. So, if I put 5 into my formula, I end up with an answer of 32. So, if I wanted to write that out, I would say f of 5 equals 32. Let's do that one more time. So same thing again. This time I know my answer is negative 13. So f of what gives you minus 13. So let's start by putting our minus 13 in the f of x spot. I'm going to rewrite the whole same equation. 5x plus 7. I'm going to use some algebra to solve that. So subtract 7 from both sides. Minus 13 and minus 7 gives me minus 20 equals 5x. Keep in mind that those 7s cancel each other out. Plus 7 minus 7. Next step, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. I end up with 20 divided by 5 is minus 4. So if I write that answer out, I've got f of minus 4 equals minus 13. And that's the answer I'm looking for.